Hello everybody and welcome to this example. In this example I'm going to show you how to add rust to your texture and I'm also going to show you how to add protrusions such as these to your texture. In order to add rust to my texture the first thing I did was I went to Google and I searched for rust and I found some interesting colors and I finally picked these three. Next I'm going to draw a rusty blob on my texture and I'm going to round the corners. I will give the texture a dark red color. I will give this blob a dark red color and I'm going to remove the stroke as well. And I'm also going to make it transparent. 50% should be fine. And finally I'm going to go to filters and I'm going to add a felt filter. Next I would like to edit this filter so I go to filters, filter editor and I'm going to change the name to rust high frequency. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the turbulence from 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 2. Next I'm going to duplicate this uh, object and I'm going to add another filter. So I'm going to duplicate this Rust High Frequency and I'm going to rename it to Rust Low Frequency. I'm going to apply the Low Frequency filter and I'm going to change the turbulence to 0, 0,07 and I'm also going to set the color to be this light red. Finally I'm going to duplicate it once more and I'm going to set the color to be yellow. Now I can also play around with which seed. If I change the seed I get different realizations. So there we have an interesting rust effect. Next we are going to draw ridges and rivets. We are going to use the diffuse lighting for that and we are going to use a background object to define the height map. So uh, don't forget that if we use a background object in our filter we need to modify the SVG file. So let's open the SVG file in a text editor. Here I've opened my SVG file in gedit and I'm going to find the line sodipodi.name and I'm going to add enable background equals new and I'm going to save it and close it. Now let's get on with it. Let's take this texture and just copy and paste it using Control C and V and move it here. And I'm going to draw a circle which is going to represent a rivet. And I'm going to change the fill and the stroke settings. I'm going to remove the stroke the fill, I'm going to leave it as it is, but I'm going to make sure it's fully opaque and I'm going to add some blur. 10% should be enough for now. And I'm just going to move it here to the left and I'm going to click on lower selection and then I'm going to select my aluminium texture, my metal texture and I'm going to go to filters filter editor and I'm going to make sure brushed metal is selected and I'm going to rename it to brushed metal with protrusions and I'm going to add a diffuse lighting 
Let's pick a light source, distant light. And as input, we don't want the output from blend, but we want the background image as input. So here we see already that we have a half moon as a result of the light shining on top of the background image, which is a blurred circle. Let's change the azimuth to 210 or so, something like that, and let's give some elevation so that the light is not shining exactly from the side, but is shining onto the surface. And we can see the shade as well. So a surface of 19 or so. Let's make it 20, why not? Note that there are some rendering glitches. This, these glitches will not be seen when you export the file. So next, let's add a blend. And let's blend the output from the diffuse lighting with the output from the original filter and multiply so that we have these lines back. It's a bit dark, so I'm gonna make the light a little bit brighter to something like that. And I also want to add some specular lighting as well. So I'm going to go here to add effect, specular lighting, and I'm going to pick a distant light again, and I'm going to set the direction to be the same as it was for the, for the diffuse lighting. And I'm going to also set the elevation to be the same. And I'm going to ensure that the input for my specular lighting is not the output of the previous, but rather the background image. And here I have some nice specular lighting. I'm also going to change the brightness of the light to five to maximum and the exponent to 15 so that it's a bit more similar to, so that it's quite shiny. Let's put it like that. The more exponents you add, the shinier the light is. Let's then add a blend as well. And I'm going to blend the output of the lighting with the output of the diffuse lighting and normal is fine. Next I'm going to draw the protrusions. I'm going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to use Bezier curves. Make sure that the snap cusp nodes and grid is on enabled. Next, I'm going to select all of them and group them. Next, I'm going to convert these objects to a pattern. I select my group and I go to Object, Pattern, Objects to Pattern. And I go to Edit Path by Nodes and I make sure that these uh, snappings is disabled. And here I have a bunch of extra handles. I have an extra X here and an extra circle. If I click on this circle and drag, I see I can change the angle of my pattern. Also, if I click on this X and drag, I can change the origin of the pattern. And finally, if I click and drag I can change the scale of this pattern. So I'm going to select 
press Ctrl Z to undo and I'm going to select this uh, square and I'm going to press Ctrl to ensure that it's the scale is changed in the X and Y directions equally. Next I'm going to change the angle and I'm going to press Ctrl in order to snap it to exactly 45 degrees. And the location of the origin doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Next, let's set the width and the height of this to 200 each. And let's move it here. And let's change the scale again. And have a look at the effect. If I move this here and send it to the back, I see an effect like this. So let's move it back to the left and let's draw a plate on top of this uh, protrusion, these protrusions. So I'm going to draw a plate and I'm going to ensure that center to center snapping is on. And I'm going to move my plate here and I'm going to duplicate it and select this rectangle in the background with the pattern and I'm going to go to object to path and difference. This object, this plate, I want it uh, I don't want it fully transparent, uh, fully opaque, but I want it a bit transparent because the because I want it to be protruding from the surface. Finally, we are going to redraw our rivets. I'm just going to draw a couple of small circles. And let's have a look at the effect. It's quite an interesting effect. Here we see some rendering, rendering glitches, but if we export it, then we won't see those glitches. Now that we've basically finished, it can be interesting to have a look at our filter and make some minor adjustments, play around a bit with it until we get something we like. For example, let's see what happens if I remove this Gaussian blur. Let's zoom in a bit. Maybe this is more to your liking, like this. Let's see what happens when I change my uh, specular lighting. Let's change the azimuth. Something like that is quite interesting. I change the diffuse lighting, make it a bit darker. As you can see, there's a lot of possibilities. I hope you enjoy playing around with it. One more touch up we could make is we could take the shiny gradient from the first part and paste it on top of this filter and see how it looks. Uh, voila, it looks quite nice in my opinion. Have a good time recreating it. See you in the next exercise. Bye bye.